Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I, I I was not born. Of course, nobody was born Christian. Uh, I thought I was Christian because I used to go to Catholic church. Um, my mom, uh, every Sunday, I remember back home, I, I used to get up early and, and want to go to church. Not because I would care so much about church. I didn't care about it. I, well, I care about the 50 uh, francs CFA that I was getting <laughs> to throw into the basket there. I remember I used to stop at a little beignet place and spend, for, maybe I would get a beignet for like uh, 49 francs CFA and keep one <laughs> five, <laughs> five uh, francs to drop in a basket there. So it was not, I mean, I, I saw that differently, uh, even during Christmas and all that. I was thinking more about the gift and the clothes, the rice, the chicken, the <laughs> meat, the drink, and the party, the you know all those things. So I can't say I was a Christian. Uh, I can't even say I was a believer because I think we become. Uh, the Bible say to, to those who accept Him, He give them power to become children of God. We become. We are the creator of God, but we are not all child of God. Uh, God created us, but we accept Him. We come to Him, and we convert to Him uh, to uh, claim that uh, uh, sonship uh, for Him. So I was not always a uh, Christian. Uh, matter of fact, when I started business, I was not a Christian. So my principle was, you know, it was just about money. I, I want to make money, 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 money. And I remember uh, probably in around 2009, uh, I mean, I, I was making money. I was making, we have probably about 36 truck in Atlanta, and we was average a little bit over $30,000 a day. Uh, I didn't have that big, I didn't have a big dream. So literally, I was so much fulfilled. I didn't even know what to spend money on it. Uh, but deep inside myself, I, that was that emptiness, you know. Everything about me was really, uh, to, you know, literally, it's like I was chasing the wind. I was not fulfilled. Uh, because, first of all, it was about me. You know, it was about me, 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 me. And uh, I noticed is that I was keeping chasing one thing. Maybe I said, well, okay, let me go buy this new Corvette who just came out. And I'll go and pay $60,000 for one and drive for a week. And oh my gosh. See somebody with another car. Like, okay, let me go get this one. Let me get another house. Let me get this. Let me, you know. So that emptiness was th was there. Um, uh, I didn't know how to be fulfilled. I didn't know how to be happy, even though uh, I, I was getting a little over close to, you know, a little bit close, to, a little bit over uh, a half a million dollar a month. I was not fulfilled, um, you know, I would buy clothes and, you know, buy new clothes and eat more food, and, but that emptiness was there, that emptiness was there, um, but when I met Christ, um, when I met Christ, uh, that was actually uh, uh, there in Georgia, um, so that was actually in Georgia, uh, that's where I met Christ, uh, I was introduced, one of my neighbor. Uh, Mr. Uh, her name was Joe Joe Tomoni. She said she used to ask me, you know, hey Ralph, what do you do on Sunday? You know, let's go to church. I said, normally on Saturday I'm at the night club, and I'm not. I was not. I was getting home probably around maybe five o'clock, and lay down and sleep for a few hours. And Joe keep encouraging me, and she said, well. I know this place, uh, this pastor, uh, he's from uh, Africa. You're probably going to lo love him. Matter of fact, Joe was from the Philippines. Uh, so she said, you're probably going to love him. He's a very awesome. They're good people. Back then, I was living in Swanee. So she took me to All Nation Church, um, Atlanta, with the uh, Bishop uh, Frank Professor Apia. And I remember back then, um, I used to go, and, and trust me, if you know Joe, you, you know you, you, she's this wonderful person that she she knew how to persuade a person. Uh, she will persuade you. Uh, so I keep telling her, "Hey, Joe, next week and next week." And every time I even reject her, 
So she will come and knock my door. Hey, Raph, let's go. I said, oh, Joe, no, I'll tell you next week. Next week, she'll say, okay, go and get some rest, and then we'll go next week. And then next week, the same thing. And I reached a point, I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to tell this guy, this lady? Uh, I said, well, okay, let's, let, let's go, let's go. Uh, she, she took me into the van uh, again. Remember, I used to come back from the club at 5 a.m. I picked the black glass, put on my, I didn't even know that. People are not supposed to be in church with the, with that kind of dog glass. So I went to church. Uh, back then, all nation would stay in Swanee um, in a little, I think it was basketball field. Uh, I, and I would come in church and just sit way back there in the back um, and just sit there with my glass. Sometimes I would just go to sleep. Uh, since that I, was, I had dog glass, nobody can see my eye. And uh, hey, man, the pastor would preach and preach and preach. And at the end, I would wake up and go back home. Uh, next Sunday, Joe was there to take me to church again. And I think I did this probably over, over six months. And it become like, you know, like get out and brush your teeth. I knew, okay, I need to go to this church. Joe is here. I will hear ding dong Sunday. Uh, and then I knew, oh my gosh, Joe is here. And she will wait and give me time, 30 minutes to get ready. And uh, so for about third, six months, I was going straight from the nightclub and, you know, lay down for a few hours. Joe ran the bed. Jump back, throw the clothes on, put my glass on, and then go to church. Uh, the funny thing is that when the church actually moved from uh, uh, Swanee, the from, I think that was like a basketball uh, uh, field, to Norcross, um, I have this little seat who was right. There was a cameraman right behind me. And I had this little seat that, you know, it was always empty uh, because a camera, cameraman would put his stuff there sometime. So that was, that, be, that was almost like mine. And every day I was there, um, uh, this guy, I, I, I forget his name. He was the, the guy who managed the camera, camera behind me. And one day he wanted to use the bathroom. He said, hey, hey, brother, please, could you still watch the camera for me? And uh, I was like, oh, sure. I said, I mean, I never used a camera before. He said, just keep your eye on Pastor, okay? Follow him wherever he's going. And then I, I, I stood back then, you know, and, and then just keep follow the pastor and follow the pastor. And, uh, and and I start, you know, if you are following the pastor, you have to listen to the message. You have to truly follow him. And I believe that's the moment uh, I start my encounter with God. Uh, just listen to Pastor uh, Frank Ofoso Apia preach uh, Sunday after Sunday, and, and that's where I start to gain even the, uh, uh, the the desire, and I wanted more. And the funny thing is that was just that whatever he was preaching, I thought he was talking to me. He's looking at me, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And, he, and a lot of time he would even mention. He said, hey, "Some of you guys who go from the nightclub to here, I was like, oh, who taught him?" <laughs> And, but I believe that's where the transformation start. Uh, the, that's where the transformation start. Uh, just to make a long story short. Uh, and, and I start follow, uh, use that cam, help on that camera. I helped a few times. Um, okay, the guy name was K. K. K was the guy who put me on the camera. The funny thing is that K, K, uh, K, uh, K never came back. So I was stuck up there for the whole preaching, during the whole preaching. <laughs> And next, the following Sunday, K found me again and put me back on that camera for like three, three months down the road. And he become a little bit more like my camera. Um, he said, oh, after service, don't leave because we have a brief meeting. I didn't ask for this certain thing. <laughs> I was supposed to watch the camera for him, for him to use the bathroom. Uh, but the point here is, that's how I encounter God. That's how... I start to receive the truth, the gospel. Uh, I, I start to receive gospel like that uh, at that moment, and the desire of more, and I want to more, and and, and 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 gradually, I start to get healed. I start to get healed. The word of God was transforming me. I was encouraged. I I, I was so full of love, and uh, it because it, it reached a point where. You know, even when Joe, Joe was not going to church, 
I will find somebody to drop me to church because I, I want it. I want it so bad. Um, so this was um, uh, this was actually a very 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 great experience, and uh, and this is how I encounter God. Uh, after that, uh, I, I continued with the audiovisual. I was the cameraman in church uh, for man, I don't know, probably about um, maybe probably about five or five years or more. No, five years, because we we from there we moved from from North Cross to another part of North Cross uh, when we actually purchased the, 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 the building for the church. I was the cameraman there. Then I was really a full-time cameraman. And, you know, throughout this, uh, and I believe that's where my call in, for mini, into ministry came for too. Um, I started to think about other people. I would say, wow, look at how miserable I was. I had the money. I had the great business. But I was empty. I was so empty. I was so empty. But the word of God really, really filled me. I felt important. I knew I had a father. I surround myself with people who really, really loved me. Uh, it was not just, you know, like the business type of business friend you find in a business world who love you just because of because they want something from you. And, and, and not only that. Uh, you know, I, I was putting myself in an environment that I would hear the sweet word of God uh, from a great minister. Um, so all these things really, really, really moved me. And I started to change some of the stuff, even in my business. Uh, my value changed. Uh, the way I, I see things change. Uh, I value people more than anything. And, and, and then the, 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 the desire... Of, you know to add value to other people the desire to share what I'm experienced with other people really really overtake me and, um, and the only thing I want was just to you know let people other people feel what I feel because it was so great um, I didn't need uh, any uh, uh, any whiskey to feel good anymore I didn't need to go to the club and dance to feel good I didn't need to you know maybe surround myself with the uh, 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 girls to feel good. I didn't really even need money to feel good, you know. Uh, so that, you know, from that moment, I understood that if you really, 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 really want to experience joy, if you want to experience peace, if you es want to experience even prosperity, it must come from within. You must be fixed from inside out. That you, there's nothing outside who can bring us joy because everything is going to be temporary. And, uh, you know, when you buy a brand new car, you get excited about a car just for a few days. It doesn't pa go past 30 days. And then you go back to point zero. Uh, if you, you know, launch a $5 million contract now, you get excited. But, you know, in a month, it's just, it becomes normal to you. But when you discover that lover, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, when you discover that father that will never leave you, that will never forsake you, that will be there with you regardless of what, that will love you when you are young, that will love you when you are old, when, that will love you when you mess up, that will love you when you even want to give up on for yourself, they will still stand with you. When you, miss, when you meet that Jesus, your life is never going to be the same. And from that moment, uh, if you do business based on his principle, based on his value, not just doing business, but if you live your life based on his principle, you will be so fulfilled. You will be so fulfilled. Not by the external thing, but you will be fulfilled from within.